I have spent more time trying to learn a language than just about anything else in life. And I still suck, but that's precisely why I've always wanted to talk about this. My friends will probably be laughing the thought of me dishing advice on how to learn a language. Son français comme un baby dans le premier moment de une bière s'il vous plaît. I find language learning so hard. If we took a list of all the things that I can do, it's right at the bottom. Below manners. As anyone who follows me on Twitter will know, Sailing on sound. I have a serious problem with spelling and grammar. On top of that, I often say words wrong and I like mash up names all the time. My handwriting is unreadable. This brain is not made for language acquisition at all. Then additionally, I grew up in a very monolingual country, Australia. So I had to do this all as an elderly millennial statesman. When I first came to Montreal, someone said, oh, bienvenue to me. And I literally said, uh, be a what? Still think about that sometimes when I'm trying to fall asleep. I have to get up and eat a bunch of toast. Canadians don't realize that all those classes in schools, the way that most packaging is actually a flashcard, the ridiculously long safety briefings on Air Canada. All of this stuff, it really does seep into your head over decades. Friends from Ontario are always like, oh, I don't know any French, but I'll tell you what don't know really means. Five years ago, I didn't know what SVP meant when it was written on a note. It never occurred to me that please would be a phrase. I bought Pamplemousse once, and when I drank it, I told my friend, Pamplemousse tastes like grapefruit. <laughs> I didn't know why someone had written Jambon on the sign of the man called Dennis. People would say, well, you know, the hard thing with French is all those conjugations. And I would say, what's a conjugation? And then they explained it, and I still didn't know what they meant. So here are my recommendations as someone who started learning a second language in my late 20s from absolutely nothing and have found every single step of this insanely hard. You have about a million ways to start learning a language, but why not start off with the most common beginner mistake? Riding the easy learning train and then never really getting off it. I realized the other day, this app in particular kind of sucks. Dancing characters and exploding coins and full up notifications from a sad owl that misses you. Come back, play with me, play with me forever. Remember you gave me audio permissions. I've been listening to you. Fun and gamified and addictive, which is part of a plan and what they admit to doing. The CEO is quoted in an interview saying, we prefer to be more on the addictive side than the fast learning side. If someone drops out, their rate of learning is zero. And that's totally valid. I mean, something is better than nothing. Le mieux est l'ennemi de mien, Voltaire. But this active users philosophy happens to align perfectly with the active users goal of this billion dollar unicorn. Une pomme, cette pomme, cette pomme est bonne. Back in 2016, a study found that the majority of apps tend to teach vocabulary units in isolated chunks rather than in relevant contexts, and that only 6% provided corrective feedback, for example. Having used a ton of language apps, this is still a huge issue, but it's not really Geolingo's problem. I mean, they've added resources and things to explain this stuff after that study came out. I mean, they're actually one of the better ones that has a rigid course structure. But Duolingo's problem is with their fundamental volume over quality philosophy. How do I say this? Duolingo doesn't want to be hard because people don't keep doing something every day if it's really hard. And if they drop out, they won't feel like getting back into it if they know that it's gonna be half an hour of really difficult stuff. Just minutes a day. It's so easy. You too can speak French with just 15 minutes a day. The linguistic equivalent of this ripped bard is not gonna come from talking to this green owl for 15 minutes a day about apples. The same study found many apps tend not to adapt to suit the skill sets of individual learners. And Duolingo has this problem, but I think it's somewhat intentional because when you only practice what you don't know, it's so much harder. That's why you spend so much time on Duolingo repeating things that you've already done hundreds of times. Most of it is multiple choice with very obvious answers. You hardly ever see two words that could easily be confused with each other, which is exactly the sort of confusion that real life throws at you. So you spend a lot of time kind of mindlessly hitting very obvious answers that you already know. They have an apple. She has a dog. I have a hard time believing the research that Duolingo has funded 
on Duolingo. To top it off, the language course it has usually isn't even going to line up with the dialect and the accent you actually want to learn. Like the French on here is like le baguette French, not le pop tart. It's the pop tart, ça plaît. C'est bon de pop tart. Pop tart, j'en ai pas de pop tart. And when I started out uh, learning French, I thought, oh, big deal, it's still French. It's really not. I'm sure that other diverse global languages like Spanish and Arabic have the same problem. And it all results in a lot of people arriving in airports having learned this. Calculated vulgarity of the antics. And then they find out, realistically, most of your conversations in life are going to be with people who sound more like this. Oh, but is there, is there? But did I do it apart from that, did I? Yeah. You did. So it actually takes like, I don't know, 20% off the top, which adds up. And even if the dialect is correct, what they prioritize, which seems to be apples, isn't necessarily what you would prioritize. In mom, in mom, Jesus Christ. Well, Geolingo, comment damn says bomla. If you do use it, I recommend starting out each session by trying to test out of a level. They will immediately push the difficulty up as hard as you can make it. And on the whole, well, it makes you keep at it thing. The truth is that over 300 million people have downloaded Geolingo, but they only have about 30 million active users a month. Despite all the fucking bings and good for you and dancing jerk offs, most of us can still only tolerate it for a few weeks or so before we stop using it. So let's have a look at the next level. It's what I'd call hard learning. Because for me, when I'm feeling motivated enough to like give something a go, I wanna make as much progress as possible. Now courses come with our own problems, of course. You can drop out, coast, zone out, or get kicked out. They also cost money usually, but you know, not always. If you're in Montreal, for example, they're effectively free. And if you were born overseas, you can even get paid. Some guys I know actually made this uh, about those, so check it out. They're not crazy. They're not, they're not crazy, I don't know why I said that. Most courses will drive you like sheep for a curriculum that isn't remotely tailored to you, which is bad. Like a lot of institutions in education, the techniques and the subject matter are pretty dated. He reads the newspaper. She reads the newspaper. They read the newspaper. Correct answer. No one reads the newspaper. Update your fucking course material. In one of my French courses, I zoned out so many times that I started wondering if I had ADHD and I actually went to the psychologist to check. Diagnosis? Just really bored. This was also the first moment that I noticed one of those advantage that the local Canadians had. A worksheet would arrive with these conjugation pairings and the Canadians would just diligently go in filling in each like blank. Ils vont, elle va, il va, nous allons. <laughs> and I was like, what the, what the fuck? How does everyone know? How does everyone know this? The class goes at the speed of the lowest common denominator, which if you're in my class, c'est moi. Having said that, I think most courses are better than most apps because courses have this one massive advantage. In Montreal, these programs are often 16 hours a week after work. And 16 hours is 16 hours, no matter how crap it is. They can be inefficient. It is very hard to sit in a room for that long, listening to, speaking, and writing a language without making a lot of progress. Let's say that an app is amazing and it's, it's twice as productive as uh, sitting in the classroom. That would mean you'd need to use the app for an hour a day for three months to be better than the 16 hour a week standard course that is available in Montreal. And in those courses, you really are conversing with people in the right dialect, asking questions, the teacher comes over and explains what you're struggling with. Also, completely different area of benefits. You get out of the house, you make new friends, you network with people, you get to share your struggles. So there's all these other like pluses to the course thing as well. You're probably gonna make more progress and you're probably just gonna feel better about life, which is a lot of the reason that we're doing the whole learning a language thing anyway. But maybe you can't get access to a free course. I mean, a lot of people live in shitty places, like not Montreal. You fools! And doing a 16 hour course after work is, is absolutely terrible. My brain was so fried every day. I ended up dropping out because I was just tired all the time. This is where the audio courses work really well. One example is Michel Thomas. There's another called uh, Pimsleur. I've used both and they're available in, in many languages. Basically, these are like audio flashcards, you know, good for like a commute with a bit of instruction in between them. You hear a sentence in English, and then you're given the opportunity to translate it, and then you hear if you got it right. When I was learning Chinese, this was the method that did more than anything to get me to actually be able to talk to people. 
The problem with them is, you often zone out after a while and realize you've just been listening to 10 minutes of people prattling on in another language without doing anything about it. Be a new. I still can't believe I said, be a what, to that guy. I'm the dumbest person in the world. But when you are concentrating, this is hard learning, so you learn a lot. Of course, you should probably complement this with an app that does more than just speaking. Could be Duolingo, but why not do something better? This is where we're getting into talking about tailored learning. Of course, that could be a private tutor, but it is almost always too expensive for people to do at the volume that you need. And even if you have a private tutor, at some point you just have to go away and get stuff into your head. When I was learning Chinese, Duolingo didn't have an English to Chinese option, so I had to go find something other than the new hotness. I ended up using a flashcard app, which has become pretty ubiquitous, called Anki. This thing has been crazy popular with med students and type A nodals for years. It's the gold standard for getting stuff into your brain. This super customizable open source app uses spaced repetition with text, pictures, audio, or a combination of all of them. Basically it shows you things, and as you master the things, they are shown less often, until you barely see them at all. So you really end up working your brain. It's maximum learning all the time. Automatically, if you got in palm right 10 times in a row, you won't see that card for a year. It gets buried. <laughs> in pomme de terre, which is a patate by the way in Quebec. So j'adore les pommes de terre. As an example of something you don't learn the right way. But the biggest advantage is it being fully customizable. So no palms at all. Unless you really want to talk about fruit. If you are specifically having an issue with, say, words in your profession, you can probably download a deck or filter a deck for that. ¿Cuántos paquetes de cigarrillo fuma cada día? Or if you're just having problems with, like, understanding what people are saying, you can download a deck that just has audio sentences that you have to listen to and then translate. And yes, I'm aware that my accent makes it sound like I'm saying dick. Then I discovered Schaefer's New Zealand style dick sealant. So see, imagine if you had learnt English on New Zealand setting on Duolingo, you know, talking about your mate's dick, and your American friends are wondering about your lifestyle. But Anki's strength is that you can edit and make your own decks. You can literally have a deck that you made because, you know, your neighbor says things too fast and you, you want to understand what they're yelling at you. God is the Chalice of a tabernacle. Or, just any time you come across something that you realize you need to know, you add it on the fly. I've been working my way through Quebecing up a couple thousand sentences. Check out that deck! This deck gets you to translate practical sentences in French, but it makes you earn every single one of them. If Duolingo is like going for a brisk walk, then this is the full mental workout. They want him to go with them. Fuck yeah! Batman et une liberté. Fuck, <laughs> bat man un. After half an hour of this, you'll be exhausted. You deserve a break. What about Netflix in another language? L'espace, l'ultime frontière. These are the things that I call passive lifestyle, where the challenge is a real one and hard, but you're just listening or reading without having to actually engage. That is from an obscure language known as French. Monsieur Data. Le vieux français était une langue raffinée qui durant des siècles a été le symbole de la civilisation. Ah oui. Because you want to get past learning for the sake of learning as soon as possible. Where most of the things are just fake little scenarios to exercise a particular linguistic muscle. You want to be feeding your tailored learning experience with, with things you're actually encountering in your lifestyle. So the passive lifestyle stuff is the easiest and it works great for temptation bundling. This is basically where you allow yourself to do a guilty pleasure while getting something positive out of it. So behind the scenes, most weeks I take a day off and do nothing but watch YouTube all day to the disgust of my partner. But often when I'm doing this I'll tag and log footage from filming. Bottom COVID mask losers picnic. Or Texas shopping football Jesus. Or weird man hair loss laser. You can change your Facebook language or treat yourself to a holiday but only to a place where you'll experience language immersion. Maybe let yourself lie in bed longer in the morning if you're reading news in another language. The page maneuver. A lot of reading and listening to things is a lot more enjoyable than flashcards. Change all of your web application languages. Buy your next ebook in a different language. You know, the, the dictionary feature in ebooks makes it really convenient to look up words that you don't know. 
I recently noticed I can change the language of Google News and living in Quebec, it suddenly just got so much better. Like there's like twice as much stuff in French compared to English. It actually became a better service from me changing the language. So just guilt-free, watch as much Netflix as you want. Just do it in the other language. You're lifestyle learning, which is awesome. It goes without saying, as you're reading and watching these things, you're going to be like, oh wait, what do they say? And you'll look it up and you're gonna start putting these things into your tailored education layer. You know, like creating a new flashcard for the sentence that you heard. The hardest but most effective way to learn the language is all at the active lifestyle level. Which of all the things is actually the most elegant solution. And that is stop speaking English. Now this is not an option for a lot of people, but if you're in a situation where language learning is as important as it is for any Montrealer, French or English, where you're knocking $10,000 off your annual paycheck if you're choosing to be monolingual. Chances are you do have an option to speak the language that you're learning fairly regularly. Doing this is obviously hard because it's like a new two-way flashcard every 10 seconds for potentially hours in a row. But what really makes it harder than everything else is you look like an idiot in front of your friends, in front of strangers, and you're also demanding their time and a tolerance of your shitty pronunciation and grammar. But with these massive difficulties comes the most amazing rewards. Every single time that you're super embarrassed, well, you're never gonna forget that word again. When you're having a conversation with someone, it is automatically the most relevant thing that you could learn. There's no aspirational words you think you might wanna say. There's no words that Duolingo or a teacher thinks you need to say. These are words that you will use because you are literally using them. There will never be an algorithm as good as what you need to know. Now people will say things like, well, I want to speak the language, but people can just keep changing back to English. Okay, don't reply in English. Are you not in control of your mouth for some reason? My hands were tied, I had to give up. I, my life was in danger from, from awkwardness. The other person is usually just being accommodating. I actually, I did an entire video on this, which, uh, yeah, there it is. Now I've lived in Montreal for quite a few years and in all that time, I only had one pickle polisher tell me to stop doing that, and they were an Anglophone. Anglophones don't always understand this very well, but many people who speak other languages, like French speakers in Quebec, love their language. It's their culture, and when you decide that you will endeavor to learn it, they are prepared to chip in a few minutes in their day. In Quebec, I don't just mean a few nice people. There is an army of people ready to talk to you about them apples, because it is understood that it has to be done to preserve this culture, to preserve this nation. It is your choice. You don't want to be embarrassed. Yeah, it fucking sucks looking like an idiot and being in a room full of people who are talking like adults and you're like talking like a five-year-old. You gotta rip off that band-aid. When I first moved to Montreal, I started off speaking French on Fridays at work, only knowing how to say oui, non, un, deux, un, trois. The problem was we used to deploy a website on Friday and I was given that job. Page, the website is down and we're getting a 500 error. We, oui, we. Oui. How long until it's gonna be up? Uh, toi. Hours? No. Minutes? We, oui, we. Oui. This literally happened. <laughs> and they tolerated it. In Montreal, even a for profit business will tolerate ludicrous inefficiency for the cause. Can you imagine, though? Anglophone fired for trying to speak French at work? <laughs> <laughs> Language police will be taking the boss straight to jail. There's another benefit to doing this difficult task beyond making the most progress. You make friends, you, you laugh a lot, and you earn people's respect, even if they do think you suck at the language. Everyone is stoked to see that one-legged dog climb up the last step. I'm gonna be alright, Homestar. I can make it on my own. Yay! He's got the heart of a champion. This is a great sales pitch for learning a language. Do you want to be a one-legged dog to your friends? Uh, no. I think of you as a two-legged elephant named Tenderfoot. So a lot of people think of these things like steps in a ladder, where at the end you finally get to have that conversation about late-stage capitalism down at the local protest club. But it's not a ladder, it's a pyramid. And it's not like a progress pyramid, it's a food pyramid. Well, I'm confused now. Now, I'm not saying that you can't learn a language with Candy Crush conversations, but this feel-good sugar is eat least. What you want to be doing is lifestyle stuff. 
And although my French Fridays thing is crazy person territory, you can start lifestyling the language way earlier than you might think. You need to rip off the embarrassment band-aid as soon as possible because the longer you wait, the less you will learn. Then with all those lifestyle experiences, go away and study based on what you're actually encountering when talking to friends or reading or watching TV. That's why I don't use pre-planned apps. They are the furthest thing from your actual lifestyle. Words, but often not ones you use. Sentence structures, but often not ones you hear. But they sure do tell you what you want to hear. Bling! You're awesome! You're 21% fluent! But you have no idea what anyone's saying to you in a real situation. However, the Duolingo CEO is right about something. It is about continuing. It just doesn't have to be in the Duolingo family of products. Language learning has moments where you're, you're feeling motivated and you're like, I'm gonna do this. And then over time you drop off. That is just universal no matter how engaging the technique is. So each time you start to drop off, reach for a new technique, not the same old app. French movie night? Cooking classes in Spanish? Mandarin meetup group? What about buying the Italian version of this board game? Adding Japanese music into your playlist? You just have to keep circulating them, you know, keeping things going. And then if something starts to not work for you, stop. But you have to find something else to replace it. As an adult, you have the ability to be strategic and self-critical and build on your existing knowledge. Which is why research keeps contradicting our narrative on this and showing that adults are actually really good at learning languages. Our brains do learn languages differently to kids, but I think the biggest difference between most of us and a 10 year old is that the kid has just done 10 years of total immersion. If you stopped today and didn't speak or read or listen to a word of English for 10 years, you'd be fucking awesome at that language, right? That's why you need to pace yourself and enjoy the journey. Very few of us can do total linguistic immersion for 10 years. Who would talk to our mums? So sure, if all you can manage is 15 minutes of Duolingo, that is something and something's better than nothing. But if you can manage harder learning, like classes, audio learning, and especially things that you tailor to what you want, those are all more effective. Because what you actually want to do is get into the lifestyle layer and get caught in the currents, floating down the river of fluency. Listening like a duck, speaking comme un duck. Un jour pourrait être un canard. See you in uh, 20 years. In addition, custom apps like this let you edit and make your own decks. So you can literally have a deck that, uh, fuck, anyway, I can hear myself. I can hear you laughing. <clears throat> Better talk to enough fucking North Americans for the last decade. Decade? This deck gets... This deck gets you... <laughs> Listening like a dick. Listening like a dick. God. Yeah, it was actually dick, somehow.